I hiked to the highest point in Arizona last weekend, Humphreys Peak. It was a tough hike with lots of cold and wind, but beautiful views. Let me tell you all about it, about the mountain, about how I prepared for it, and about the hike itself. Humphreys Peak is one of six peaks in the San Francisco peaks in Flagstaff, Arizona. They are a part of an eroded volcano. In fact, this volcano is one of hundreds of volcanoes in the San Francisco volcanic field, though none are as large as this one. Humphreys rises to 12,633 feet, but as you can imagine, the five other peaks in the group are also among the tallest in the state. It's also a sacred mountain for the Native American tribes in the area. Basically, it's an impressive landmark that you can see from all around. It's beautiful no matter the time of year, and it is revered for its size and beauty, but also for its cultural significance. So let's talk about the hike. There are a couple ways to get to the peak. I took the most common, Humphreys Trail number 51. It starts at the day-use parking lot at Snow Bowl, which is a ski resort on the mountain. There, you are at 9,266 feet in elevation. I started my hike at about 7.30 in the morning. It was chilly, but sunny. However, a short while into the hike, I was among the trees, which shadow the area and made me forget that it was actually a beautiful sunny day. It's the kind of place where the ground never really gets dry. Everything is just a little damp. Speaking of the ground, it is littered with rocks and roots for a good three and a half to four miles in the beginning. It seemed like I couldn't take two steps without picking my way over or around them. There were even some downed trees to crawl over. So I hiked among those trees on those rocks and roots for what seemed like a long time because it's a steady incline. I was already headed up in elevation. And remember the hike starts at a fairly high elevation anyway, which can make a real difference depending upon what your body is used to. And the higher up I got while in that deep shade, the chillier it got. On the bright side, the surroundings are enchanting. Pine trees, aspen trees, mosses and grasses and wildflowers. I hiked this during October and the area is notorious for leaf peeping during that time of year because the aspens and other leafy trees around turn beautiful yellows, oranges and reds. I was enveloped in that incredible forest in the beginning, which led into sunshine and glimpses of wide vistas through the trees every so often. All the while, I was climbing, climbing, climbing. At almost four miles in, I reached the saddle. It's the point where Humphreys Peak meets Igacy Peak. That's when the trees really start to thin out and I was exposed to the elements. I got lucky and had pretty mild weather it was still windy and cold with snow towards the top, but there are often dangerously strong winds, rain and lightning, or even snow in the summer months. From there, I really started to notice the altitude. I spend a lot of time in Flagstaff, hiking regularly to over 10,000 feet, but at the saddle, I was already surpassing the elevation of the mountains that I've climbed in the past. Snow started to show up on the ground, the trail started to get a bit narrower, a bit more difficult to find. I even had to do a fair amount of rock scrambling. I loved seeing the signs about being in a tundra because just an hour before, I was in a beautiful forest. Climbing up that last mile was strenuous. I didn't ever wanna turn back, but there are several false peaks and I was surprised to feel a bit sluggish almost, certainly because of the altitude. And even with the exertion of climbing, I was pretty cold but I didn't want to stop to put another layer on. At last, I could see the sign on the peak in the distance. I was glad to see it, though it seemed so far away. When I did finally reach the summit, I got my photo taken by the Humphreys Peak sign, sat down for a quick snack, and then I was ready to head back down. There's a bit of shelter from the wind up on top, but there were a bunch of people huddled in it already, so I was getting blown about a bit. Plus, it's all rough volcanic rock up there. It's just not a very comfortable place for a picnic. And then I took my time on the way down. Again, that mile or so to the saddle was rough. Going down, it was a bit slippery in places, and without the exertion of going uphill, 
I was getting colder and colder. But it was nice to be going downhill and past the saddle, the wind died down, the sun was shining, and I got warmer. I even stopped a couple times for snacks as I hopscotched down that same trail of rocks and roots. So, five hours and 50 minutes, 10 miles by foot, and up and back down 3,367 feet of elevation, I reached the parking lot again. I was pretty worn out, but it was hard to feel anything other than joyous because it had turned into a beautiful fall day. The yellow-leafed aspens were all around, the sky was technicolor blue, and it was not too cold and not too warm. Heavenly. Now there are certainly taller mountains in the world. There are certainly tougher hikes, but this one was plenty to make me feel the altitude, to put my body to the test, and to reward me with stunning views. One thing I didn't talk about before was my preparation for this hike. Like I described, this isn't a simple walk in the woods. I keep a good base level of fitness, but I recently started lifting weights a bit more and I think that helped me out tremendously on this unrelenting climb. Now, let's talk about what I brought with me. Clothes first. I wore light tights and a short sleeve shirt, but I had a light fleece jacket on that I wore the entire time and an additional tech jacket that was in my bag, just in case. Also, I had an ear warmer headband, which I wore most of the climb up and two pairs of gloves that I regularly layer to keep my hands toasty. Uh, I also had a set of chemical hand warmers in my bag too, but I didn't end up using them. I like to be prepared though. On my feet, I wore my running shoes, uh, I regularly hike in them, but I saw people wearing the whole range of footwear from van sneakers to hiking boots. I wore my Camelback Octane 18X with its three liter bladder full of the delicious water that comes out of the tap in Flagstaff. I also brought food. I like to bring fruit and nuts, and this time I even had a little package of crackers and hummus. And then I had just a few other random things in my bag, like my knife and my phone. Now for the camera I brought. Since I didn't really know what I was getting myself into on this hike, I chose my Nikon 1 V1 and its dainty little 10 millimeter f2.8 pancake lens. It did a great job of capturing my surroundings while not weighing me down. And I brought an extra battery too. The last thing I brought, a buddy. A strenuous hike that I had never been on before, I definitely wanted to have someone with me. Raymond the intern, my trusty hiking companion, was definitely up for the challenge. I shared many photos in this video. I have a couple of them up at snapchick.com for you to take a look at. There's a link to it in the description of this video. For my VIPs, I have an entire gallery of images for you at that same link. Now you saw the on the ground, behind the scenes video from the hike earlier this week but I'll add a link to it with the image gallery just in case, so you'll see that when you sign in as well. So guys, tell me, have you by chance hiked Humphreys Peak? Or, I don't know, maybe some other great mountain? Tell me about it in the comments. And if you would like to see more of my hikes and my field trip videos, there's a link to a playlist of them up above.